Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam Good morning internet, it is 7.30 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in Attar, Mauritania. I have taken two days of rest after the whole ordeal to get here. And I've cleaned uh, Alaska's air filter. I checked, there were a few bolts that were gone. And yes, I use Loctite, but even with Loctite, <laughs> bolts just disappear if you hammer your motorcycle for long stretches at a time. So I replaced some bolts and just checked everything and so Alaska seems to be all good. So that means I am ready for the next adventure. And I've just been also the last two days just really busy with trying to figure out how I can do what I want to do. Because I really want to visit the Risha structure, also known as the Eye of Africa or the Eye of the Sahara. And this place is pretty incredible but it is extremely remote. And especially the route that I wanna take there, it's really far out. So I've been doing calculations, I've been talking with local people here, I've been talking with Ahmed. To do the whole loop, to get there and back, I need to bring 40 liters of fuel. I'll need about 20 liters of water. I'll need food for three or four days. I, I just don't know how to do it. So I've been thinking, ah, oh, can I somehow send some fuel ahead? Maybe there's fuel in one place, but it's not for certain. How can I do this? Because bringing 40 liters of fuel uh, and 20 liters of water, it is so much extra weight as well. Even if I somehow would manage to tie that on my motorcycle, it's gonna be super, super heavily loaded, especially at the rear. And, oh, yeah, here's okay. Yeah, thank you. Merci beaucoup, c'est doux. Hey, <laughs> On top of that, there's also more dune riding, and these dunes are quite a bit taller than the ones that I did before. There's a thing about safety, of course. Um, it's getting hotter and hotter as well. It's now getting to like 40 degrees Celsius during the day. It is really hot, and the air is so dry. Even if I don't do anything, like no exercise, I'm just sitting here. I just have to drink water all the time because it just kind of seems to evaporate out of your body because of the, the air is so dry. So the desert must not be underestimated. Uh, he must take it seriously. So eventually when I was talking to Ahmed about it, he said, I can go with you. I can guide you. He knows, he knows this desert. As you've seen in the previous episodes, he knows everything. He knows the, the whole area. He knows it from the back of his pocket. Is an expression. <laughs> anyway, he knows it really well. That means that he could carry my fuel, so he could carry the 40 liters of fuel, 20 liters of water. He can then also carry all my luggage, of course, in the car. So I can actually ride a light bike again, which is, well, motorcycling-wise, way more fun as well. So, but then I was like, ah, oh, but I'm a solo traveler. Like, I'm not used to traveling with other people. I never do this, never. And then following a car for like three days, three, four days, it's not, it's not what I want to do. I'm just so used to always being on my own and just, yeah, making all the decisions and just really feeling that, okay, I am alone in this place. And it's a very different feeling from when you're with other people. But in the end, I thought, I think it's the only way I can do it. The only way to actually go out there, ride this amazing route. It's the only way to do it is, with, is to go with Ahmed. Um, otherwise, it's just either not going to work or it's going to be really, really dangerous. So I made the decision to go with Ahmed and that way I get to see hopefully the research structure. So that is the plan. So I won't reach it today. Today we're going to head in that direction. So now I'm right over here in Attar. The research structure is somewhere. Is it indicated? It's somewhere in this area. So today we are going to ride via the north 
Fireplace got LB yet? And off we go! I am so excited about this. This first day is going to be a big day. We have a lot of riding to do. I think it's nearly 300 kilometers of off-road. So it's, it's big. It really is. So. This is the market of Attar. <laughs> I just stopped to lower my air pressure a little bit. I wasn't sure how fast we would go in the dunes. So when I was in Atar, I put air back into my tires. But uh, it's already getting a little bit soft. So I said, let's lower the pressure again. <laughs> come on, come on. The third gear is not even making it in third gear. Full throttle, third gear. Not getting anywhere. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. Go, 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 go. Right, a lot faster than Ahmed. This is this is the one really th difficult thing about following a car because I just need to go much faster. It's difficult to ride slowly behind him because then I just get bogged and I like start wobbling the bike. But yeah, he can't go as fast as I can. Shop with him in like <laughs> two seconds, but yeah, the same like last time. I also don't want to stay too far behind him because then he can see me, so then he has to all the time worry if I'm still there or not. So, kind of have to stay close. Ah, wow, look at this view, it's amazing, right? This place really is not just sandy desert there's so many plateaus and mountains it's fantastic i'm gonna get ahmed a little bit of a head start so i can <laughs> keep some momentum this is very very soft come on
right, we are taking a short break. We're now in between the mountains on that side and then the sand dunes on the other side. So we're going to be crossing this corridor. But before we do, it is kind of lunchtime. So we set up camp and on today's menu is camel. So uh, we are barbecuing. This is the barbecue. And uh, that is camel meat. I don't think I ever had camel meat before. I've had camel milk, of course, to drink, but uh, to eat, I don't think I ever had camel. So one kilogram of camel meat at the market is between 300 and 400 ugia per kilo. So that's about 10, what is it? 10, 13 euros, 10, in between 10 and 13 euros per kilo, depending on which part of the camel. There we go. Martinian lunch. A Mauritanian lunch. Let's continue. Oof, it's getting really, really hot now. Hoppa. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this massive tree growing here. Fascinating, right? And then one tree right up the dune there. It's incredible. You sleep here all the time. <laughs> it's good, good tree. What a place, right? Just the fastness. Unbelievable. Hey, there's some camels there. Standing in the green. Can you see them? Oh, there's some in the sand here too. <laughs> Right, I'll just wait in the shade of this tree for Ahmed to catch up with me because I'm not sure which way to go from here. I'm really enjoying this. It's so nice to... <laughs> oh, I don't know how many times I already said it, but it's really nice to ride a light bike and just kind of fly over the terrain without having to worry about all that luggage on the back side. All right, here we are approaching the point. Oh, it's gonna get narrow, I think, between the sand and the mountain.
Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but there is green coming up, like you wouldn't believe. Assalamu alaikum. Ya klebas. It's okay. It's okay. Ça va? Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Et vous? Ça va? Ça va? Ça va. Ah. Ah bon? Ça va? Ah. Euh Anna Smith et Norali. Smith? Norali. 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 Mohamed. Mohamed. Abdullahi. Abdullahi. Ibrahim. Ibrahim? Ibrahim. Hey. Ibrahim. Bravo. <laughs> Good. How uh, are you? Uh, Ahmed. Ahmed? Yeah. Ahmed. Uh, what did you say? Huh? The bird? I don't know. 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 Salam alaikum. Ça va? Ça va bien? Tu te parles comment? Tu te parles comment? Comment ça passe? Et je m'appelle Norali. Cher. 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 Eh, eh, Ahmed. Ahmed. Yeah, Mauritania. These goats are running away. Already are running too. I think we're gonna set up camp somewhere around here. You can see the sun is already pretty low. It's the end of the day. We didn't reach El Bayet yet. El Bayet yet. <laughs> but we'll just continue tomorrow. I think this is a pretty nice place to stop somewhere oh. ah he's putting them in four wheel drive again yeah yeah I understand that because this is really soft I dug myself in a little bit too but uh, I can't engage four-wheel drive Deep 
stuff. Very soft, soft, deep set. So we set up camp for tonight. Alaska will be sleeping here. And well, I also kind of installed my <laughs> work office here. I'm just transferring my footage uh, to my external hard disk right now and charging my phone and some GoPro batteries and that sort of thing. But this is where I'll be sleeping tonight and the sun is almost going down. It's gonna be a beautiful, sunset the sun is just setting behind the mountain there now it's pretty crazy how much water you drink on a day like this because today i already filled my camel bag two times and that's three and a half liters each time so that's seven liters that i already drunk i'll show you this is the drink water supply so we still have plenty and then these two are my fuel these are both petrol and then I think that is uh, gas oil or diesel for the car. But this is 20 liters, that's 20 liters. So tomorrow morning we'll fill up my tank because my tank is now empty. So then we will use the, what well they call it bidon here to fill up my main tank. I imagine that I had to carry <laughs> those two 20 liter jerry cans on the back. It's yeah, impossible. Hey? Alaska did it really well today. She got a little bit filthy. Everything is covered in sand, obviously, and re really fine dust that's gotten everywhere. But other than that, I did not notice any abnormalities <laughs> today. So that is always good. I'm riding in so much <laughs> dust. This is just how my windshield looks like. So yeah, that might also explain why my face probably also looks a little bit dirty. But hey, I say welcome to the desert. What a place, right? It's unreal. And then you got these trees. These must all be acacias, but have a look at the thorns that are on this tree. Look at the size of those. This is my finger for scale. So you can see how incredibly <laughs> tall they are. This tree does not want to be eaten. So we have fresh vegetables for dinner tonight. We got potato and paprika tomato and carrot. Let's see if I can collect some firewood. That would be nice. There's some uh, pretty nice dry wood laying around. Like the pieces like this. It's perfect for the fire. Oh, the temperature is so much nicer now. It's really cooled down very quickly, but oh, I was hot today. <laughs> I was really hot. Still, I mean, you can't even come in this desert in the summertime. It is, it's just not possible. Way too dangerous. So people ride in this desert from like November till April. That's when it's okay to come out here and go into the desert but where I stayed last night in Attar they also said that uh, the locals like most of the locals trying to multitask <laughs> most of the locals will leave Attar in the mid of summer and they'll all go to the coast so they either stay in Nuadibu or Nyam, Nyamchot <laughs> I think I still mispronounce the capital of Mauritania I'm not sure about the nomadic people if they stay year round or if they also go more towards the coast with the animals. I know about that. More? So dinner is ready. It is amazing. Uh, I'm eating camel meat with a vegetable kind of stew. Tastes really good. And then some bread. And we got the fire going. And I don't think you can see any stars. No, you can't see that on the GoPro. Ah, you'll see the moon. That's the moon. The moon is quite bright tonight. 